Transitions. You see them a lot in all kinds of content. Gaming videos, travel videos, comedy skits, TV, and films. In most cases, if you don't notice them, the editor has done a good job. In other cases, if it's not done very well, it can really halt the pacing of a video. As you can see, I'm chopping Oh, try me, bitch. For some videos, they can intentionally add a lot of style. Like in my recent isolation video, I was going for an old 50s vibe. Finn's been told. Today, we're going to talk about how you can make super smooth, engaging, and stylistic transitions for your videos, whether for gaming videos or anything else. Now for a quick word from our sponsor. <clears throat> there are two ways of doing transitions, manually from scratch or presets. Now listen, don't let that word scare you. They're genuinely very easy to use and I'm going to show you how to in this video. Firstly, I'm going to show you how to do a basic whip pan transition from scratch without any presets because it's super easy and I'm sure that you guys will find this helpful in the future somehow. So let's get started. Let's say that you've cut your clips and you want to make a transition from one clip to another. First thing that we're going to do is head over to the effects panel. In the search bar, type in push and you'll find down below is an option in video transitions called push. So grab that little guy and plop him right in between those two clips that you want the transition to be in. You'll notice the animation has absolutely no blur and it's just a wipe from one to the other. That's fine for now. We're going to change that very soon. With your cursor, drag the push animation to be around 11 frames in duration, as seen here. After this, you should create what's called an adjustment layer found in the project window. Just press this paper looking icon and select create new adjustment layer. A settings window is going to appear. Just set the frame rate to whatever your project is, then just select OK. Now that we've got our new adjustment layer in the project window, let's drag her on over to the timeline. Whoa, that's huge. <laughs> just give her the old medieval snip snip and delete the excess there. There we have it. So now we head back into the effects panel and search up directional blur. When you find it under video effects, drag and drop that into our newly created adjustment layer. Now head into the effects controls of that adjustment layer. Here you're going to find the directional blur settings. First, you're going to set the blur angle to 90 degrees. This gives it that side whip you see in most whip pans. You can do this in any other angle depending on which way you want it to whip. But for now, let's just stick with the side whip. After this, we're going to go to the start of our layer here and create a keyframe in the blur length section with the value set to zero. Next, move to the center of the adjustment layer, roughly where the clips meet on the timeline and create another keyframe. Remember, you can do this simply by changing the value and the keyframe will be made for you. I'm going to set this one to around 150. This will be the blur at its strongest point. Then we go to the very last frame and create a keyframe with a value of zero again so that the blur has a smooth in and smooth out. I like to play around with all of what I just said to get the best look. I advise that you do the same. What I'm doing here is lengthening the adjustment layer slightly as I think it needed more time to build the blur. Then moving those keyframes over to the start and the end. <laughs> now time for one of Finn's top secret tips. So as you can see, when we use the directional blur, it creates this kind of black smudging effect on the outside. We don't goddamn want that. So what we're going to do is head up to the effects panel, type in transform, and then you bring this one down into the adjustment layer where the directional blur is, and then go to the effect controls. When we're here, we're going to see a lot of options for transform. But what we're going to do is create a keyframe at the beginning, the middle and the end in the scale variable. So once we've done that, we've got to go to the middle one and we're going to crop it in just a little bit around 115, just so that it has time to zoom in and zoom out. And that's it. It looks way better already. You're welcome. Time for the most important part that ties it all together. The sound effect. Once in the project, just trim the one you like best and drag it on into the timeline under the transition itself. You'll see here that the audio peaks right where the transition is. That is what we want. Let's watch it back. How dare you? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the mole, man. Uh, yeah, look. Like ah! <laughs> now, <laughs> I agree with you. This is a bad example. Ideally, you'd want shot A to be in a different scenario to shot B, so that there's something to actually transition to. 
But nonetheless, what I'm showing you here is what you need to do to create your own one. And to be honest with you, I couldn't be bothered to edit this all over again. So here's some better examples of what we've just done. <laughs> hey, Finn. Finn, you're good? You still with us, buddy? Just hang in there, alright? Slap that editing cap on if you need to. On to the next technique. This one is going to use a mix of what we just made, plus a preset. This kind of transition is what you'd usually see on my gaming videos. If you're doing this effect from scratch, then you'll have to do what we just did before. But for now, I'm alt and dragging to save time. Now, we're going to alt and drag that adjustment layer we just pulled in to the tab above the existing one to create a duplicate in the same place. We don't want there to be two of the same effect. That's pointless. So let's remove the effects off of one of them. To do this, we right click and head up to remove attributes. What this does is remove the directional blur that we had on there earlier, making it a blank adjustment layer again. We could have just pulled another adjustment layer on top of this, but I'm showing you this now because removing the attributes is generally a very useful thing to know how to do. And when you know it's there, it can help save time in other scenarios. So now we have two adjustment layers. One is the directional blur and the other is blank. We now head over to the effects panel again and find the presets bar. Let's quickly install your preset. I've left links to all the presets I have in the description, and I'm gonna let you pause the video here so that you can go and download them now. Okay, done? Great. So when you've got them downloaded and unzipped to a folder somewhere that you're happy with, just right click here and select import presets. Now find the folder that you downloaded them to and double click the files that look like this. And well, bam, it's that easy. You now have all these beautiful presets to play with. Totally free. So with that blank adjustment layer we have, feel free to drag and drop those presets to see how they look. Make sure you play it back to see what works. And if you don't like it, just Control Z and undo that effect and pull in a new one. <laughs> this is a personal preference, but I prefer to take off the chromatic aberration effect, as I personally don't want this effect for the video. Really, it's down to personal preference. What did you say? <laughs> It kind of reminds me of the mole. Man. As you can see, we now have two effects stacked up. This is what I advise you to do with your projects in general. Get creative and mix things together. Be experimental. Oh my God. So like I said before, this isn't the best example of this. The main thing here is that you learn how to do it in your own project. On to the last transition. This time we're heading straight into the effects panel and finding other presets we'll use. There's a link down below where you can download these exact presets. So as we did before, right click and import the preset. There it is. This one's a bit different to the other presets we've used. The reason being is that with this one, you have to drag and drop it directly onto the clip itself. No adjustment layer needed. Drag and drop the chosen effect onto the clip at the front of the transition. So clip B, this one here. Here we go into the effects controls and have a look and see where the newly made keyframes end. And then go to the timeline and cut right along where the viewing line is. When you've done this, drag that section of the clip to the track above the first clip like so. Essentially, this part of the clip is like an adjustment layer that we've used before. Drag the rest from the right track or simply right click and ripple delete. I'm gonna get creative and try something out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull an adjustment layer like before, alt and drag it, delete its attributes, and put this data moshing transition effect on there. As you can see watching this back, this just adds a little bit more of a glitchy effect, which totally makes it better in my opinion. Now time for the all important sound effect. I'm gonna use a TV glitch sound effect which I'll leave a juicy link to down below. Now let's watch the final thing. How dare you? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> that? It kind of reminds me of the mole, man. Uh, yeah, look. Like, ah! <laughs> so that's it. Jesus. We've gone through a lot today. It's almost like I'm actually doing a tutorial this time. <laughs> I hope you can take something from this, even if it's just something to save a tiny bit of time. As a nearly full-time editor now, my advice to you guys if you're making YouTube videos is to be creative with your work. Try things out. Mix and match. There's loads of potential ways to do things differently than anyone else, especially with transitions. In the next how-to video, we're going to go through exactly how important sound effects are to your project. It should be a good one. I'm quite excited to make it.
Also, I want to give a tip of my fedora to my first patron, Kyle. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. If you guys want to send me a virtual coffee, I'll leave a link in the description. It's always appreciated. Anyways, you're done. Go have fun editing. Say hey in the comments. Let me know what's up. I'm going to be making a few more how-tos. Maybe some weird shit in the middle. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, this is good. This classic Finzar outro right here. Uh, the music's going to stop now. I'm going to say subscribe to Finzar and you guys are going to do that, okay? And then the music's going to come back in really hard and it's going to make it funny. <laughs>